Good afternoon. I'm Firefighter Nick Alexander. I'll be your instructor for the evening covering PPE. Before we start the class, I'd like to let everyone know we have an exit to my left and that we have one to everyone's right. Now, if you need to get up and use a restroom, take a water break, you'll find that down this hallway to your right. If everyone would, I'd like, like you to hold your questions to the end of class. Just take notes down and we'll address those at the end of the class if you have any. Now, a little bit about myself. I'm instructor Nick Alexander. I've been a firefighter for five and a half years. Five of those years, I was at Meridian Fire Department. I drove and rode engine five. We had a lot of structure fires and a lot of calls that gave me a lot of experience. And I can tell you a lot personally about this equipment here, this personal protective equipment and how vital it is to make sure that you use it properly and that you wear it properly. Now, moving on, uh, structural firefighting PPE. What's it designed for? It's designed to wear the SCBA, a self-contained breathing apparatus. We have one here. Now, we're not going to get into putting this on today. We're just going to get on with the uh, donning and doffing of the bunker gear, your boots, your hat. Now, everyone here We'll get the opportunity to go outside after class. We don't have enough room in here, but y'all are all going to get to do this, and y'all need to do it in under a minute. It's going to take time and practice, but everybody will get it. Okay, so moving on, what do we have here is first we have a, a helmet. Helmet's going to be hard composite plastic. It's going to keep you from getting a bad head injury in case something like a wall or ceiling tiles or anything was to fall and hit you in the head. It's a Good protection source for blunt force trauma to the head. You're going to make sure it fits you tightly, that you have your chin strap on. You've got a shield. You've got reflectors on it. Most of your equipment has reflectors. Uh, next, we have our Nomex, Nomex hood. Nomex is usually what we call these because that's what most of them are made out of. They're very, very good at protecting us from getting, getting burns on our face. The SCBA mask doesn't cover everything, but your mask does a really good job of covering the outsides of it. Now, it's designed to be worn on the neck and the face as one piece. Uh, a lot of people, they, they let this mask, they just let it get dirty. You need to make sure you clean this. There's more and more studies coming out that firefighters are getting cancer and they're getting it around their face and their neck. And why? It's because of this. You get in those house fires, you get that smoke, all those chemicals on you, and you let it sit. So make sure that you're washing these. You need to, so you can just change them out. Okay, moving on, we have our turnout gear. We have our coats. We have our pants. Now, why is it called turnout gears? Turnout gear. Turnout gear got the nickname from being turned inside out so the firefighters can get it on quickly. Also called bunker, bunker pants or bunker gear altogether. Now the reason it got that name was because it was found by people's bunks or their beds. People would get it just as close as where they were sleeping so that they could get it on quickly and get to the call that they're, they're going on. Now, this gear is made out of Kevlar. A lot of times it's woven with the Nomex. It's made up of multiple shells. You have an outside shell and you have an inner shell. Your inner shell is gonna keep you from getting steamed getting that superheated gases and fire is going to protect you from all those elements. Now the outside is mainly for your abrasions and protections from small cuts and scrapes and stuff like that. Now if you'll notice on your on your bunker pants you have knee pads. The knee pads are really good at protecting your knees whenever you're on the ground. You're having a low crawl through some really smoke, smoky situations that you may get in where you can't see good. You'll also have these reflectors all over. Notice here, here in the front and on the sides, the arms. That's that's helpful at nighttime whenever you're out. It's really dark, low light situations, low light uh, calls that you may go on. It'll help your, help your partner or anyone that's out and about in the area see you whenever light reflects it obviously. Okay, moving on, we also have our gloves. 
gloves are going to be usually leather, two layers. The uh, moisture barrier is water, heat resistant. Leather gloves, you, you can find them in kangaroo style, buffalo, just all kinds of different leathers. Uh, Shelby glove is a really good glove. You want to make sure that these fit you tight. You don't want loose gloves. Loose gloves will get you nowhere. You have one come off your hand, you're in a very hot, hot atmosphere, you're going to hurt yourself. Um, now moving on, I'm going to show you all how to properly don this equipment and lay it out logically. Alright, first thing we have is we have our turnout coat out in front of us, upside down and backwards. You have your gloves your SCBA mask. You also have your SCBA out here to the side or in front of you. Make sure that your hood is face down in between your boots. Your helmet also needs to be off to the side with a chin strap loosened. Now, everyone's going to get the chance to do this outside after class. We don't have enough room in here. It's really, really tight area. First thing you want to do Just grab your hood. Put the hood down. Step into the boots. In the boots, grab the suspenders. Extend them. Tighten them. Go to the ground. Take a knee. This is where you cut. This is where you cut your time down. Velcro. Buckle. Coat. At this point, if you're going to the SCBA mask, you want to go ahead and grab the SCBA mask and put it on. But for demonstration purposes, we're going to leave it off. Grab your helmet, tighten the chin strap, tighten the back, and put on your gloves. And you're done. Everybody in this room should be able to get this in under a minute going to take time. It's going to take some practice. But getting this gear on quickly is going to keep you safe. Keep you from getting in that fire truck and trying to put it on going down the road. It's very dangerous. You need to hear the tones. Get to your gear. Put your gear on. Get in the truck. Buckle up. Safely arrive. And then the most important thing before you go in that house fire you need to do a buddy check. Why do we need to do buddy checks? What if we don't have on our hood correctly? If you don't have on your hood, you're going to burn your ears. You're going to burn the side of your cheeks, the side of your face. Helmets. You better get them on tight. If you don't have them on tight, you can cause a very bad accident if you fall. Now, how do we, how do we doff this equipment? Helmet first, then gloves. I like to take mine, fold them up, put my left one in my left pocket, put my right one into my right pocket. Then <clears throat> simply just do the process backwards. Unbuckle, grab the cuff. Pull your arm out. Suspenders. Pants buckle. Velcro. And here's a tip for getting everything lined up for the next call. Kick one leg back. That enables you to drop your pants down to over your boot. <coughs> then alternate. Take off your hood, and you're done. Now, that will slow down. Everyone here, I've got faith in you. You can do it in a minute, maybe down to 50 seconds. Some of you might even get 40, 45 seconds. 
very important that we do these buddy checks though. I can't stress the fact that buddy checks are going to keep everyone safe. They're going to keep everybody everybody going home. Uh, another another important factor of this equipment, and a lot of people don't do it, is the care of it. A lot of people want to get their gear dirty. They want to see how dirty they can get it because that looks like experience. Well, the problem with that is you're covering yourself in cancer. That's all you're doing. This gear needs to be washed per the manufacturer's recommendations. You may find that here on the inside. It needs to be stored in a cool, cool climate, air, just air it out. Don't leave it out in the sunlight. Too much sunlight will deteriorate it. Periodically, you need to check your gear. You need to go over it and make sure there's no tears, no abrasions. Make sure that your liner is in good. An important thing to check is to make sure that your, your DRD device is in properly. So in case you are down, this is a down rescue device. You can just pull this. There's a handle in there. And that'll help someone uh, drag you out if you're down or, or vice versa. It'll help you drag someone else out if they're down. Make sure that whenever you're storing this equipment that you're not putting it beside the exhaust of your fire truck. We see this a lot. This is what we did in Meridian and it's, it's wrong. You're going to you're going to cause cancer. That's a, I can't stress that enough. A lot of people will just overlook it. But people are causing cancer from unsafe practices. Leaving their gear dirty. Leaving their hoods dirty. Not washing the hood. Not washing the gear. Whenever you exit a fire scene, everything's done. Everything's put up, put away. You need to get that gear off. You need to wash any kind of smoke, smut off of you. This gear needs to be hung up to dry aired out. If you have two two separate uh, issues of turnout gear, that's very, very beneficial. I uh, just can't can't stress that enough. Uh, do I have any questions, comments? What's the what's that made out of? Okay, well like I like I mentioned before most of your most of your boots they're going to be leather with a sometimes it's no make sometimes it's just it's your regular blend of uh, materials on the inside but the the most important part was the steel steel toe in the front and steel under the soles now the soles you really want to get those Steel toe if you can with the steel soles because any kind of puncture, any kind of sharp object coming up, that could cause some serious, serious injury. I know a lot of cheaper boots, they might just be hard composite plastics, and that's that's good, but it's just not as strong and sturdy as your steel is going to be. Now, as far as proper placement, like I mentioned before, you'll want to take that hood lay it right there in between the, the pants. That way you can have that on first. That's out of the way. Pants, coat, helmet, then gloves in that order. Now, if you're putting SCBA on, obviously you want to do the gloves last. You want to do the mask. Then you want to do the hood, then the helmet, then the gloves. I, I hope that Solves a lot of your uh, issues with what order I get the gear on and how I care for my gear. And that pretty much sums up the class. Uh, we're going to go outside and we're going to go through this again real thorough. I uh, know that everyone here can do it in under a minute. I got faith in you. All right. Thank you for your attention. If you would, uh, just exit with me out the building. Thank you.